What's good out there in the world? I see y'all. It's your boy Carcino here. And let's get into it. Many of y'all might be asking questions like, man, who is this Carcino guy I think he is? <laughs> who is this guy, man? How does he get to say all this stuff, man? But look, I'm like you. I'm a human being that works every day, eat, take a dump, take a pee, go to sleep, brush my teeth, start it all over again the next day. Listen, it's just like this, man. What I do in a day, most people don't do in a lifetime. But yesterday, I saw Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins. And this movie, I went in with very low expectations. Everybody was like, ah, I'm turned off about this. Because it's coming out at a time in which this is a franchise that like nobody's talking about, that they keep moving along. <laughs> the G.I. Joe franchise. Now, the first G.I. Joe I thought was pretty good. And then the second one, I was like, well, this wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. When they were so worried about the movie flopping, they went and added Ch Channing Tatum to it when The Rock was in it and nobody was really checking for you know what he was doing at that time they felt Shannon Tatum was bigger than The Rock and they put him and paid him all this money just so he could do a couple of scenes in the movie before he went out and that, that was it for G.I. Joe I mean it they had Marlon Wayans trying to be the action hero star. Yeah, that wasn't the bad casting choice. Now, he was good for the comedy part of it, but for the action scene, no, it wasn't believable. Now, this movie is based on what everybody wanted to see anyway, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Two mortal enemies battle each other with G.I. Joe. You know, and he rarely talked or didn't talk in the movie Snake Eyes. And it was like he was sworn to secrecy where he wouldn't take off his mask. Wouldn't take off his helmet, wouldn't take off his mask. No one could see him take it off. Yep, so before the Mandalorian, we had Snake Eyes. <laughs> so... Anyway, Snake Eyes is the the Nicolas Cage movie that came out, uh, and that was all about a boxing fight thing that went wrong, so that's why this is called Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origin. Now, going into this film, you had... A lot of things working for this. You see a story piece where you kind of know where it's going. Uh, father saves his son, sacrifices his life. His son sees him executed. Sees the guy who did it. And harbors all this guilt for hiding. You know, he's hiding as the son gets away. Now, he grows up, he's cage fighting, and doing all of these techniques that mainly his father taught him as a young boy, and he's just into these cage fights for money. Then he starts working for this Japanese guy who comes along. Tells him he could give him his father's kill. He just wanted something done. So 
basically he has to go to work for this guy and while he's working there something goes completely wrong and once things go wrong he ends up joining this Japanese family where they take him in make him treat him like a brother even though other people didn't want him to join he comes in and then when you learn there's a, a, a surprise in the movie that actually worked. I didn't think it would work and it worked. Now, of course they got a movie element in it. You know, I'm just saying 17 dudes with samurai swords going to fight one guy and they're losing. And this one guy has a, a, a little mini knife, and that's it. Sometimes he didn't have a knife at all. I just find, kept finding it hard to believe that guys with no weapons are beating guys with katanas. Was, that was just the nonsense part of it to me. You know, that dude, organs would have been flying all over the, in the sky. I don't care if they had basic training. This one guy is not going to be waltzing in there without any weapons in his hand and beating <laughs> and beating all these guys it just was not making any sense so I was having a hard time adjusting to the mental aspect of what was transpiring at that time like through the movie like it was like they were adding characters from the old gi joe movie and i understood it and it was cool to see the one japanese lady in there who basically was like in love with snake eyes that character she's from a video game that's uh, on the PS4 is one of those uh, games where you got to make the decision and they move on so it's like one movie and you got to keep hitting the button to make them make decisions and then they move on to the next scene it's kind of like one of those so I've enjoyed it I was surprisingly pleased with the movie. So overall, I felt like the movie was great, uh, very watchable. The mid-credit scene was cool because you know you already know where it's heading. But if you're a first person watching the movie, you know you'll get it. But if you're a GI Joe fan, you know um, if you follow or remember GI Joe, then you'll get it. But the younger generation will be lost <laughs> watching a film like this. Uh, it had its flaws, but it had its bonuses too. Um, I give it three stars out of four. I enjoyed the movie, you know, despite all of the people getting hurt. And like, I mean, if you get stabbed by a sword, you should be pretty messed up for a while. You know, you know, to, for you to walk this stuff off. You know, it's just a little too quick. You know, guys are getting stabbed up, and then now they act like they never were stabbed. All right, they grimace for about 10 minutes, and next thing you know, the grimace pain is over, and they're back doing what they do. So, I'm going to get out of here because my phone's ringing. But we'll chat later. I'm out.